It's never been this hard. There is pain, grief, and loss. And it is not easy to manage so many emotions at the same time. More than 700 people have been killed by the junta. More than 3,000 currently detained, sentenced, and warrants have been issued for 970. Those detained are tortured, and their tortured faces are shown on state TV every night. But hats off to the brave people of Myanmar who are not accepting the rule of the military junta and joining the civil disobedience movement, protesting every day and night. The kids from my neighborhood still bang pots every night at 8 p.m., knowing that they could get arrested for this. Yangon, the commercial capital where I live, has been taken over by the military junta. All you see is small undernourished boys carrying guns that weigh more than them, cordoning off roads, harassing and intimidating innocent civilians at checkpoints. I leave my smartphone home when I go to my local wet market. Most of us have switched to keypad phones to stay safe. Plus, there is no point in taking a smartphone because there is no cellular data or internet available. On top of that, there is a night curfew and night rates that have increased. I worry for my friends. Some of them have safely left the country and others are in the ethnic areas where the real action is happening. The Myanmar military has a 70-year history of fighting battles in ethnic areas. Many in their urban centers have only heard about these atrocities. Some never even believed that the Tatmadaw was responsible for the genocide in Rakhine or killed people in Kachin or northern Shan. The last three months have exposed the military junta and its leader, General Ming Aung Thang. With the continued violence, the European embassies have asked their citizens to leave Myanmar. Only a handful of expats are left in the city. In the earlier days of the civil disobedience movement, we witnessed expats joining the protests in big numbers, but they were then pressured by their embassies to lie low and think about their own security first. A local friend of mine said to me, it's like domestic violence. They want expats to leave, so no one is there to see the atrocities done by the Tatmato. Many Myanmar residents who can afford to leave have also left for neighboring countries. Many refugees are crossing the border into Thailand and India. Many young people, especially the Generation Z pro-democracy protesters, have taken refuge in the areas controlled by the ethnic armed organizations. The struggle for a new Burma is real, though the question is whether the world is ready to recognize the national unity government of Myanmar or if they will continue to support military dictators and villains. I wish and pray that we get to see new Burma soon.